last week's homework was about um, the pandas library and um, you got these two like data sets or actually three data sets um, um, and the first task was about these two um, experimental data sets from Chris and here you had to just do some uh, yeah, smaller calculations and find out um, yeah, for example which was uh, the quickest sentence uh, to answer I think and um, yeah I skipped this bit with making myself comfortable with the data set for now uh, I hope you did that where, while you uh, were working on the homework but um, yeah in the new homework uh, in the new lecture so lecture 8 uh, the last video the last optional uh, one actually um, also talks a little bit more about exploratory um, data analysis and how you can get comfortable with new data sets and uh, how to get into yeah, what, what kind of data you're dealing with. So if you're interested in that, um, have a look at that video, but it's optional so you don't have to watch it. Um, the, the topics are not relevant um, for the exam, for example. Okay. But then let's start with task one. And here the question we want to answer is, does the average uh, reading time uh, differ for the respective predictions? Okay. Um, and it already tells us we should use this subject all new data set. And um, it pretty much tells us all the steps that we have to go through uh, to answer this question. So first of all, um, it says here that to answer this question, you have to consider only those rows of the experiment data which are not for practice and which have an answer. So, um, yeah, we have to first filter out those rows which are practice or don't have an answer. So let's do that. And um, first of all, I'm just going to maybe print this uh, data set such that we can see uh, how it looks. And yeah, this is a little small now, but um, I hope you can see that here. Um, okay, it actually doesn't show all the columns. So let's have a look at just the columns. Here we have uh, this one column is practice. And um, yeah, we can use that to figure out if the a certain uh, row was a practice or not. And then we can filter that out. So uh, we we'll say we only take the data where um, is practice is false. So um, we will take those values of x data um, accessing is practice. But then we have to negate this. So this tilde sign negates this um, this thing, and this column is already a boolean column. So we, we can just negate this. And then, um, yeah, we get those rows of the data set where is practice is false. And this would just return this. So we have to save this um, and we'll just save it in the same variable since we don't care about the practice rows. And then, um, yeah, we'll have to group this by, um, it tells us here, by the column which experiment and also by fits prediction. Okay. So let's group this and maybe also print the result of the grouping. Um, for that, we just uh, use the group by function on this data set. And since we have to group on two columns, we have to pass a list here. And um, yeah, the two columns on which we have to group are given here. So I'll just insert them here. And then this will return a group by object. So if we just run this, it tells us uh, this returned this um, pandas core group by um, data frame group by object. And we can actually see the contents of that. So to see um, yeah, the values in there, we have to do some kind of aggregation. And it also tells us what kind of aggregation we should do here. Uh, we should do a mean and the count. And additionally, it tells us that we should do this for the reading response time column. Um, so yeah, we can um, use the feature from the group by object to um, select columns just with a normal data frame. And here we can just use this column here. 
and now we can call our aggre aggregation function and since we want to have two here I'll use this egg function and there we can just pass two or arbitrarily many uh, aggregation functions and here we want mean and count um, yeah so if I uh, run this we can see that we now have series uh, no it's actually a data frame um, since we have two aggregations um, with this multi-index with which experiment and fits prediction and then we have the two columns mean and count okay um, and then it also says that we should now drop this filler row and you can see we have this which experiment filler here um, we're supposed to drop that so uh, first of all I'll just save this um, in this same variable again Okay, there was a question uh, if we don't filter out the data that is not that does not have an answer. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I actually forgot that. So we should also filter out the data that uh, has no answer. Um, uh, then let's do that right now. So I'll just print this data set again after we filtered out the practice rows. And here you can see that in this answer column we have some um, yeah, some uh, values which are NAN and uh, now we want to remove those NAN values since uh, this is missing data and we uh, yeah want to get rid of that for the answer column. Um, and yeah, you're right, actually, this was also stated in the task here. Okay, so let's just do that then. Um, yeah, so we want to filter out those rows where and the exp data answer column is NAN. And for that, we can use the um, PD dot is NA. Um, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe I did that as well when I did the homework. Um, maybe I just forgot that and that's why I um, didn't do it. Probably it doesn't make a difference then in the end. But yeah, I'm still going to do it now since it's stated in the task and uh, yeah, it's not a big deal, I guess. So for that, we um, check where um, X data is uh, NAN value for the answer column. And this will give us only the NANs. So if we print this. then we should get only NANs in the answer column. Yeah, now answer only has NAN values. So we again have to reverse this, we have to negate this, and now we should have only values, yeah. So now answer um, doesn't have NAN values anymore. And now um, we can get back to our aggregation here. Let's see where we were before. If we just print this again. We can see we're now back at this data frame here with our mean at count, but we still have this filler row. And we don't want that um, as the task description states. So we just call drop on that and we want to drop one row. So we have to specify which index um, and we want to specify, uh, we want to drop the filler row. So the row where the index is filler. And if we do this, you can now see that we are the filler row is uh, no longer there. And this already looks like um, this data set that we are supposed to return. So let's just remove the print, add a return and check if this worked. And the PyTest worked, uh, the PyTest passed. So this is task one um, done. Then let's go over to task number two. Um, and here the answer we want, uh, the question that we want to answer is which sentence took the longest time to read? And uh, for that we have to use the subject fill a new data set. And as you can already see from the header of the function here, we don't get any data. So we have to read the data set ourselves. And the task says that we should use this read CSV function. So let's do that. Uh, we call read CSV. And um, we know that this data set is called uh, subject filler new. 
CSV. And then, um, yeah, let's try this out. And I already know that this will not quite work. Um, but just to show you why it doesn't work, I'll print this. And you can see now that, yeah, we basically only have one column and this column contains all the values that are in there separated by semicolons. And this is not what we wanted. Uh, we wanted to have the columns um, which are in the CSV file separated by semicolons uh, be parsed into actual columns and not just one column where the values are separated by semicolons. And for that, we can use the sep argument here. And if we set this to, uh, to a semicolon, then it's going to use the semicolon as a separator and not the uh, comma as, uh, as it does by default. And now we have our data frame as it's supposed to look. Okay. Then furthermore, the task says that uh, it would be nice to have the stimul index column as the index column. And uh, we can already do that as well in the read CSV function. So we just set index call equal to this column uh, name. And now our stimul index is uh, our index actually of the data frame. Um, okay. And then now with this correct index, it wants us to um, get the indices of the columns where answer correct is true. Okay, so um, let's just save this data frame in a variable, call this df or data frame. And now we want to uh, find the indices where this answer correct column is true. And you can already see that we have a lot of NAN values here. Um, but here at the bottom, there's already one true value as well. So, um, yeah, and by the way, the, the task description says that we have to set this, uh, that set the D type of answer correct to a nullable Boolean, but uh, Pandas already does that automatically for us, by the way. So we didn't have to do anything manually here. Uh, Pandas found out that this should be a Boolean column and um, automatically made this a nullable Boolean, um, which is a new data type since Pandas 1.0. So, uh, yeah, we didn't have to really care about this nullable Boolean, but um, it's just a nice new feature that was recently added to the pandas library. Okay, but now let's get the indices of where answer correct is true. And um, we want to, um, first of all, figure out which rows are, uh, in which rows answer correct is true. And for that, we can just uh, create this Boolean mask um, where we check if the rows of um, the data frame have a true value in answer correct. And now we want um, the indices where this is actually true. So we'll just access this data frame with that. And now we only, uh, only have those rows, uh, but the whole rows um, with all the columns of this data frame where the answer correct is true. And we'll just take this index of that. So now we have the indices where answer correct is true. And I just save this in this index variable so we can use it later on. And um, yeah, now we can uh, try to do the rest here. It says that we should group uh, this data frame by sentence num and uh, then get this mean of the reading response time column. So now let's do the grouping again with uh, the group by function. Now we only have one column, which is called sentence num, and we group by this, and then we should again uh, just use this one column here uh, for the aggregation. So we directly just take this one row, and then since we only do one aggregation function as well, we can just directly call mean here, and this will give us the mean uh, of the aggregated groups. Okay, and yeah, finally this should be returned. So let's just return this and check if this worked. And it didn't work. Um, what was the problem? It says the series are different. And um, here we have different values for the series. Okay, so why are the values different? Um, oh yeah, we didn't actually do anything with the indexes here. Um, I forgot to do that. And uh, we were only supposed to take um, 
yeah, those parts of the data frame where answer correct was true. So for that, we have to use only those rows. And since we already have the indices of that, we can just use, um, uh, no, not I log, but a log, since these are actually the indices from the index um, column and not the like indi in ind indices uh, of the data frame. We have to use log, and then we just put the index in there. And now, yeah, now this passes, and we only have one failed, which is the last task. Okay, very nice. Um, then the last task had a new data set, and this was the Pokemon data set that you already saw in the lecture. And um, yeah, I'm gonna skip this step of making myself comfortable with the data set again, um, since you've seen this data set in the lecture and in the homework already. And I just get to this task here. And here we have to find the Pokemon with the best stats that can best defend the most common type combination there is. Okay, um, that sounds a little confusing. And um, yeah, since this is um, yeah, a little difficult maybe to grasp if you're not that much into Pokemon, um, there's also some dummy code here already which you can build upon. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna do that. So I'm just gonna uh, fill in this code here to see um, which Pokemon has the best sets for this task, I guess. Chris made this, uh, Chris made this task. I don't really know much about Pokemon. Okay, so first of all, let's just print this data frame that we get. Um, it's called all Pokemon. We get this as a parameter in our function here. Okay, and now this has um, lots of columns and the ones that we're interested in are this type one and type two column. Um, okay, and these type combinations, so I guess every Pokemon has two types um, and we want to find out what the type combinations are for each Pokemon. And for that, uh, which is already stated here in this task in the comment, uh, we can use a group by here to figure out um, all of the Pokemon type combinations. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, let's just do that. <clears throat> and we'll just use this all Pokemon uh, data frame and do a group by. And uh, yeah, we want to group by both types here. So we'll have to pass a list with type one and type two. And then um, we want to count how often this type appears. Um, so yeah, for that we can use the count aggregation function. <coughs> Sorry. And um, this would give us uh, the counts for all these columns, but we are only interested in the counts for the indices. So we can just take one arbitrary column here. Let's just take name and count. Uh, yeah, call the count aggregation function on that. And to see if this worked as expected, we can just print our type nums here and maybe not print the whole data set anymore. So now we have these, we have a multi-index since we did a group by over two columns. And now we have the counts for each of these combinations. And to get rid of this multi-index, since later on we want to figure out um, what the values are in this index, <coughs> we can just call um, reset index on this. And this will just introduce a new index to this and use the multi-index as columns again. So I will just save this in a variable as well and still call it type nums. And now uh, what we have to do is figure out uh, what the most common types are or what the, yeah, what the Pokemon, no, what the most common type combination is in this all Pokemon data set. Um, yeah, and for that we already have this code here. So um, here we somehow have to in, uh, yeah, fill in the names of the types, the type combination that is most common. Um, okay, and how do we figure out the most common type combination? We'll get the, um, yeah, we, we already have the count, so we just need to get the maximum of that. And um, I'll just print this first to see if it works. And um, I will do, 
um, yeah, I'll have a look at this name column now. And name doesn't really make sense. This, um, yeah, this this column name doesn't really make sense anymore because it's not the name, but it's the count. So maybe what we also can do is just rename this. And we want to rename the columns. Um, and we do this with a dictionary and we just rename name to maybe count. Okay, and now we can use this count column to then figure out what the maximum is. And for that, I'm going to use the IDX max function. And this should return us the index 68 um, of the um, yeah, most common type combination. And then if you just use an I lock here with this um, maximum index, then we should get the yeah the the row of the most common types here and um, yeah since this still includes this count um, thing so we now have a series instead of a data frame this still includes this count row or the count value um, we only want to get the types so we we'll just use type one and type two of that. And now we only have flying at normal here. And I will use that to just fill this in this new series uh, of the common types. Okay, and this line is a little long now. Okay, I hope that is still readable for you. And now we have this common type one and common type two. Okay, so let's just print these good to see what they are. And these are flying and normal, apparently. Okay, now we want to figure out uh, what type combination is most effective against this most common type. And uh, we get another parameter in this function. It's called effectivity attack. But uh, as the task says, um, and it's also suggested here that we want to figure out um, which Pokemon is best in defending against that. And for that, we can't use this attack data frame or this attack um, mapping list, uh, but we have to convert this into a defense um, yeah, mapping. And this is already said how we can do this down here. We'll just have to transpose it. So we'll use this effectivity um, attack transpose this and by that we get this effectivity defend um, data frame and now what we want to do is figure out what the defender types are um, for um, yeah for this most common type flying and normal and the task description tells us that we can do this by finding the rows and columns where um, the value is 0.5 for common type one and common type two. Okay, so let's then maybe first of all print this um, effectivity defend data frame to see how this looks. And this just has a lot of values and um, has the different types as columns and as rows. So we want to figure out where um, there are 0 0.5s for fly, no, for flying and normal, I think it was. So our most common types. So we want to access this at the positions and now we want to do two filterings. So we want to create two masks. Uh, the first mask will be um, effectivity defend with the most common type one. Um, common type one. And we want those um, rows where this value is 0 0.5 and we also want so this will be the second mask now um, the rows where this common most common type 2 is also 0 0.5 and if we print this um, we get two rows in our um, yeah in our effectivity defend uh, data frame and now we can use these two rows to figure out um, what the uh, 
best defender types are. And you can already see that the defender types are in this attacker column. Um, and I'm not sure right now if, if this is a column or the index, actually, I think it's a column. But um, yeah, let's just print then attacker. Okay, it's apparently not the column, but then it should be the index. Um, yeah, and now we get this index of rock and steel, which are our best defenders. Okay, and then I'll use this whole thing that I just created. And um, yeah, I can actually just use this and put it in this uh, list. And now I should get, well, it's getting a little hard to read, I think. So let me just, um, yeah, this should be better, I think. So we take, maybe I, I'll also do this. Okay, so we take uh, our effect, uh, effectivity defend data frame and we index this using these two masks and we uh, use an and sign for uh, this combination of the two masks. So we'll only use um, those values in the mask where both are true. And we check um, where in this data frame the value for common type one and common type two is 0 0.5. And I'm not actually sure what the 0 0.5 represents um, but yeah, this came from the tasks. And um, you can see, I don't really have a clue about Pokemon, um, but yeah, it's still, I guess, doable for me since it already said that I should get the uh, 0 0.5, whatever that means. Okay, but now we have the defender types, I hope. So let's print these, defender type one and defender type two, see what they are. And they are rock steel. Um, which we saw before were the um, values that we got in our index, but now we just have them as two variables. Okay, nice. So now we are supposed to find out um, what good defenders are. Okay, and um, we do this by using at the original Pokemon data, uh, data frame again. And um, here it says that um, yeah, we have now found out which types are good defenders against both common type one and common type two. So we have that in defender one and defender two now. And now what we want to do is um, we want to filter the Pokemon edited data set for Pokemon that have these types. Um, and we want to filter them no matter which type is type one and which is type two. So we have to figure out, uh, so we have to filter both um, combinations. So first type one, then type two, and type two, then first, uh, then type one. Okay. And then uh, in the end, we'll have to select the one with the highest overall stats, which is in this total column. And then we're supposed to return this entire row of the data set. Um, and then, yeah the resulting Pokemon should be called Agron. So this is just to um, make sure that you understand, uh, that you can check your, your answer. Okay, but then let's figure out what the good defenders are. And for that, we'll have to check. Um, uh, so we have to filter the Pokemon by uh, the defender types. So we'll use this all Pokemon data frame again and uh, we want those rows where um, type one is defender type one and type two is defender type two or the other way around. So how do we do that? Um, we'll do masks again. So I'll just use type one first and type one is supposed to be defender type one. Um, yeah, and additionally, what we also want is that I'm just going to copy this. Additionally, um, the type two should be defender type two. So we want both of them um, as true. 
and to just make this a little bit more readable again um, I just do it like this now but this is only one combination of the two um, and we want both combinations so we also want to filter the Pokemons where um, Defender Type 1 is Type 2 and Defender Type 2 is Type 1 in our original data frame and um, for that since this is not um, yeah, a, a conjunction anymore, but now a disjunction. We'll have use have to use a, yeah an or, which is this pipe symbol. And I'm just going to copy this. And then uh, since we want to check the other direction now, I'll just reverse this. So we'll first check if type one is defender type two, and then if type two is defender type one. And this should give us the rows in all Pokemon where um, we have the best types to defend the most common one. And uh, let's just print, not the whole dataset, but just our good defenders to see what we get. And we get these couple of Pokemon. And we can already see Agron is in there, so we didn't do everything wrong. And also all of these uh, have rock and steel as their types. And as we found out before, these two types are the best defenders against the most common one. And now we just have to figure out which one of them is the best one. And uh, as the task description tells us, we can do this via this total column. So we just have to find out um, yeah, which of these Pokemon has the best total value. And uh, we could do this by hand already. And we see actually that Agron does have the best total value, 530, but um, yeah, we want to do this uh, automatically, of course. So let's figure out how we can do that. And um, yeah, we could, for example, there are different ways of doing this. Um, I'm going to show you um, my favorite one. So the one I find most intuitive and simple, I guess. Um, and for that, I will use um, this total column and then I'm just going to call IDX max on this again so this will give us the index um, of this um, of the maximum in the total column and if we print this this is 306 we can see 306 is the index of Agron so this is nice and then uh, what we can do is just um, yeah use this dot lock to again uh, filter out using our index and then uh, just put this index in there. And now we can see we get the whole row of Agron. Okay, and this is actually all we have to do. Um, and since this code is already here, I just insert it in there. Um, this is what I just wrote in the print. And now this will be saved in this best defender uh, variable and we return this in the end. So I hope this works now. Yeah, it worked. Uh, all the pie tests passed. And um, yeah, this was the whole homework. Are there any more questions regarding any of these tasks now? Now would be your time to ask in the chat. Okay, I see no one typing. So I assume that everything is clear. Okay, perfect.